From Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle presents the Mel Blanc Show. Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Earl Ross, B. Benadera, Joe Kern, Zookie, and Victor Miller and his orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard Mel Blanc as the happy postman. Hello, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. You've heard him as the famous train caller. Train leaving on track five for an I, Mazusa, and Coop Galanga. You've heard him as Pedro. Pardon me for talking in your face, senorita. Thirty days, Hacienda. April, June, and Sombrero. <laughs> I think... You've heard him as the lovable character, Zuki. Well, I'm the fixer chop. I'm the president. I'm the president. I'm the president. I'm the vice president. Vice president. I'm the treasurer. Tre- 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 <laughs> I sweep out the place. You've heard him as the famous Warner Brothers cartoon character, Bugs Bunny. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Now hear him as the star in his own show. Hello, Mel Blanc's fixer chop. You bend it, we mend it. Do you have a broken chair in your house? A broken table in your house? Anything that's housebroken? Well, don't try to fix it yourself. Don't ruin it. Bring it to Mel Blank. Let him do it. Right now in the fix-it shop, Mel's uncle is talking to our hero's general assistant, Zuki. Zuki, come here, will you? Well, I can't. I'm too busy. Busy, 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 busy. Here I am. What time is it, Zuki? Well, according to me and my work clock, it's if I see I can't tell you. Why can't you tell me? Well, because by the time I tell you what time it is, it's some other time. Come on, Zuki. Here come Mel and Betty. Let's get out of here. Look, darling, don't you see? The fix a chap will never amount to a thing as long as you let your Uncle Rupert and Zuki live with you. Well, gosh, honey, I have to let them stay here. Well, why can't that uncle of yours go to work? Well, he's still weak from his overseas shots. Overseas shots? Yeah, he got him in 1917. <laughs> he spent six months in Pierre's Bar and Grill in Paris, 20 shots a night. <laughs> that I can almost believe. Oh, that's right. The last time he saw Paris, he didn't see it so good. Oh, Mel, why don't you try to be serious about business? Well, I try. And another thing, do you realize that we have been engaged now for five years? Gosh, our wooden anniversary. (laughs) Don't you think we might begin toying with the idea of getting married? Oh, now, honey, you know I've been working on our nest egg. Well, we're both getting old, the egg and I. (laughs) Well, yeah, but... Mel Blank, now this is what I'm talking about. Now, look. Look at this birthday card my father got from the Eternal Life Insurance Company this morning. Now, why don't you do something like that? Why don't you try to build goodwill? Okay. I'll send a birthday card to everybody in town who has a birthday this month. Oh, Mel, that's wonderful. And another thing. I'm going to talk to Uncle Rupert and put him straight. Oh, darling, it's so good to hear you talk like this. I'll tell Uncle. He'll just have to buckle down and, and loaf somewhere else. <laughs> I'm sorry, Uncle Rupert, but that's the way it's got to be. Melvin, my boy, I'm hurt. Haven't Zuki and I been everything to you? Well, not exactly. I haven't been everything to you? No. That's why I want to get married. (laughs) You can't even cook. (laughs) Well, anyway, my lad, let's not be hasty. I've got another idea. Why don't I go on living here and work for you? Oh, but Uncle Rupert, I can't afford to pay you anything. Oh, that's all right, nephew. After a while, you'll owe me so much money, I'll own the fix-it shop. Well, yeah, and Then but... you can go to work for me until you earn enough money to get it back. Say, both of us can make a darn good living like that for years. We... we now wait. Doesn't hit you, eh? No. Uncle Rupert, you're not talking me out of this. I see what you mean. Well, Melvin, if this means the parting of the ways... I shall simply have to ask Widow Longnecker to marry me. Oh, but you said yourself marriage is a serious thing. Are you sure Mrs. Longnecker's your type? Why, 
Why, of course, Clara is my type. She's rich, isn't she? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you should marry for love. Well, I love money. <laughs> but she's so long and lanky. Melvin, my lad, when a lady is that wealthy, she's not long and lanky. She's tall and stately. <laughs> well, have it your way. Now, will you send Zuki for those birthday cards? Indeed, I will. Oh, Zuki. Zuki, will you come here, please? Well, I can't. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. <laughs> Here I am. Nell wants you to go down to City Hall and get a list of people's birthdays. Oh, uh, people's... Yeah. Then stop off on your way back and pick up some birthday cards in the five and ten. Yeah. Have you got that straight now? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for the bee, the bee, the bee, the bee, the bee, the bee. I'm Young the man. Bee, huh? This is the Bureau of Vital Statistics. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. We have records on everybody from the cradle to the grave. Records on men, records on women. Also, Spike Jones playing the gypsy. <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, I, I, I'm looking for the bee, birth, birth, you know, bee, bee, rock a bye, bee, 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 bee. Hey, I bet you was a beautiful baby. Oh. oh, yes, indeed I was. Why, my mother used to... Oh, so that's it. You're expecting a baby. Oh, uh, how could I have a, a, a baby? Uh, I'm not even me, 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 married. Well, you should have thought of that before. Marriage licenses are down the hall. Hey, uh, but, uh, but I'm a confirmed bachelor. I don't believe in the... Me, me, me. I'm putting loose and fancy for the... Uh, fancy... Uh, <laughs> Nobody wants me. Now, make up your mind what you want. Our files are complete from the cradle to the grave. We have the cross index to ZY, counter cross to AAL, and crisscross to YYZ. Ending with a fiscal year MCM XLV. Now, what do you have? Uh, lily, uh, lily, uh, lily, uh, let me hear Spike Jones playing the gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. Look, here's a list of everything we've got. You can take your pick. Oh, thanks. Hmm. Gosh. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, this printing is sure close to the paper. <laughs> is that you, Zuki? It's about time you... Oh, oh, it's you, Mrs. Longnecker. How are you today? Oh, me. Another day, another dividend. Oh, the woes of wealth. Well, what's the matter, Mrs. Longnecker? Oh, it's so annoying. I was at the bank all day today. You were? Yes. The bank wants to borrow some money from me. <laughs> but I'm not going to give it to them. Why not? They haven't paid the last loan I made them. If they don't pay me back soon, I'll just have to foreclose. I get more darn banks that way. <laughs> oh, money, money, money. Think of it, Melvin. I'm just swimming in wealth. What a beautiful way to drown. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Longnecker. Yes? Were you born this month? Was I what? Were you born this month? Oh, oh, of course. I'm just out doing a little shopping for my mother who's still in the hospital. <laughs> well, you see, I'm sending birthday cards from the fix-it shop to everybody in town who has a birthday this month. Well, what on earth for? Oh, it's a great business idea. Make a lot of money so Betty will be proud of me. Money. Doesn't that fiancé of yours realize the terrible things money can do to a human being? Why, just look at me. Yeah, maybe I ought to warn her. <laughs> uh, do you think ah, that I... my dear Clara, this is indeed a pleasure. Well, I didn't come here to give you pleasure. What do you want, Rupert? I wish I could tell you how radiant you are, my dear. How like a tall, stately slapling... <laughs> <laughs> sapling... <laughs> Sapling in the breeze. <laughs> yes, I wish I could tell you, but I don't have the words. Well, considering you did it without words, it was okay. <laughs> Please, Rupert, I'm in no mood for your nincompoopity. <laughs> nincompoopity? Oh, oh, Melvin, I've quite forgotten what I came in for. I'm giving a reception tonight at the mansion, and I want you to come up and fix a loose floorboard on the front porch. A loose floorboard? Yes. Every time somebody walks into the house, the board comes up and slaps them in the face. Gee, that's embarrassing. 
It's even more embarrassing when they walk out. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Longnecker. Well, Betty, all the birthday cards are mailed out. Oh, Mel, I can't wait to see what happens. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if someday I have to use a velvet rope to handle the crowds in front of the fix-it shop. Yes, honey. Why, the fix-it shop will become a household word. You know, like, uh, like, like Drano. <laughs> yes, darling. Can I see one of the cards? Oh, sure. Here. Oh, they're pretty. I see, it says, best wishes on this most joyous of all occasions, your very own natal day. Yeah, natal day. That means birthday. I looked it up. Now, wait a minute. What's this? What's what? Behind this little flap on the card. Look what it says. Oh, I didn't notice any flap. It says, I hope the gift I'm sending you under separate cover will brighten this most joyous of all occasions, your very own natal day. That, that means birthday. I... Oh, Mel, what did you do? I looked it up. <laughs> Don't you realize what this means? Oh, yeah. It means I've got to get 98 birthday presents for all the people I sent cards to. Oh, if I don't, they'll never come near the fix-it shop. And you were going to keep the crowds back, with a velvet rope, no less. Well, I can still find use for the velvet rope. For what, for instance? Well, not everybody can afford to hang himself with a velvet rope. <laughs> How often it happens, you meet a man, and you think, he's a nice fellow, but... But what? Well, you hate to say it, but it's that little breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. And the chances are, this chap doesn't dream that a breath of trouble is tagging him, making him unpopular, hindering him in business, spoiling his fun. Without suspecting it, you may be the victim of unpleasing breath. So be on your guard against it. Just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Okay. Okay, come here, please. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, don't take a, ch 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 a chance with your ever be, ever be, ever be, ever be romance. <laughs> oh, Mel, I wish I could think of some way to help you. Gosh, Betty, what am I going to do for presents for those people? I've thought of everything. Well, it's no use worrying about it now. I guess something like this could happen to anybody. Yeah, but it always happens to me. Oh, Mel. Betty, you know you're the only girl in the world for me, don't you? Am I? You're the only girl who'll have me. <laughs> and and you're so pretty, too. You know, every morning I think of you while I'm shaving. Uh, I'm glad. Sure. I look in the mirror and I say to myself, Gosh, you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, well, you you know what I mean. You're so sweet, and I'm such a worthless, brainless, shiftless, stupid... Gee, aren't you going to interrupt me? <laughs> oh, don't worry, darling. Everything will be all right. The world always has an opening for someone like you. You just have to find it. What do you mean, find an opening? Look at the hole I'm in now. <laughs> Lad, your troubles are over. What do you mean, Uncle Rupert? In this big package, you see 100 beautiful boxes of candy. They'll make 100 most appropriate birthday presents for the people you sent the birthday cards to. Hey, that's swell, but where did you get them? It so happens I ran across a dear old friend today, Warren Harry Greenspiegel, who now owns the Ace Novelty Company. Yeah? Ah, good old Greenspiegel. Used to be a fellow vendor in a Burlicue house in Hoboken. 
Uncle Rupert, I never knew you sold things in the burlesque house. Huh? Oh, <laughs> purely educational. Photographic knowledge for gentlemen who never went to college. <laughs> Postcards, to be exact. Postcards? We, oui, we. Oui. Ooh la la. Uncle Rupert. Oh, uh, inspirational views of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, let's get these boxes in the mail. Say, I'll be doing better than the life insurance company. They only sent out birthday cards to customers. The cheapskates. Yeah. I'll be sending bonbons by Greenspagel. De Paris. I guess this will show people in this town this isn't a melon I have for a head. That's right, Melvin. You've got brains in that melon. <laughs> Rupert, it was nice of you to get that candy for Mel. You know me, Betty. Unselfish to a fault. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, I don't understand it. We mailed that candy out two days ago, and we haven't received one thank you note. Not even a phone call. Oh, look, here comes Mrs. Longnecker. Ah, maybe this is my chance to win her hand. The one that signs the checks. <laughs> I have just one box of candy left. I'll try it on her and see how she likes it. Well, good luck to you. I'll leave you two alone. Ah, Clara, my dear. Uh, hello, Rupert. So glad you dropped in. Now, Rupert, I'm in no mood for your nincompoopity. <laughs> but, Clara, I have a beautiful gift for you. A gift for me? Oh, how nice, Rupert. Yes, a box of French bonbons, direct from Paris. Made by my very good friend, Monsieur Greenspagel. Oh, you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> oh, it's quite all right. A gift for the fairest of the fair. They come to you untouched by human hand. Greenspagel wrapped them himself. Well, I, I must open them immediately and try one. Try one of the peanut clusters. Oh, but these are not peanut clusters. These, these are ordinary peanuts. If I'd known you were coming, my dear, I'd have clustered them myself. Yes. Well, no, I think I'll try one of these caramels. Mmm. Mm. Delicious, aren't they, my dear? Mm. Stop jumping up and down, Claire. What the devil's the matter with her? Hey, Uncle Rupert, what happened to Mrs. Longnecker? Maybe she hasn't learned how to use her new upper plate. <laughs> Learn? What does she do, take lessons? Hey, what happened anyway? Hold on. What's this inside the candy box? What? Oh. Oh. Ace Novelty Company's number one joker. Be the life of the party. Treat your friends to sure pucker alum candy. Oh, no. Oh, 50 mirthquakes to a box. Laugh yourself to death. There's been some mistake, nephew. Oh, some mistake is right. I can just see 98 people chasing me down the street, all of them yelling, Kill Bill Black! Kill Bill Black! Now, take it easy, take it easy. What are you doing? Can't you see? I'm laughing myself to death. Laughing! Gosh, I feel awful. <laughs> Gosh, if only one of those people we sent the candy to would say something, if they'd only do something, why don't they? It takes a little time. Ed. A lawyer. Gee, I bet they could send me to the state penitentiary for doing this to people. They can't send you to a state penitentiary, Melvin. Of course they can. Using the mails to defraud is a federal offense. <laughs> state penitentiary and federal prison. You know what I'll have pinned on me? A two-way stretch. Now, now, don't be silly. Hey, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the mailman is coming. Oh, he's got uh, loads of mail. Hey, uh, you'd better leave by the back door, Mel. Yes, nephew, run for the hills. No, Uncle Rupert. I'm going to face the music. Oh, uh, well. Uh, quite a bit of mail for you today, Mr. Blank. Wait. All those boxes. It's the candy we sent out. And those are all the birthday cards. Here, let me see. Hey. Hey, they all read the same way. Listen. Return to sender. Addressee deceased. That means dead. I looked it up. Huh? Say, Mel, I think I know what happened. Well, I wish you'd tell me. Don't you see? Zuki got the wrong address down at City Hall. 
Instead of birthdays, he got the names of people who passed away. <laughs> oh. Then I'm safe. Nothing happened. That's right, and you can thank Zuki for that. Gosh, yeah. Gee, you saved my life, Zuki. I could kiss you. Hey, uh, you can't kiss me. Uh, don't you dare to uh, Don't you kiss. Uh. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Well, we'll be back in the fix-it shop in just a minute for a zookieism. What's a zookieism? <laughs> Wait and see. Use cold cake tooth powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use cold cake tooth powder. Take it from me, that little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, can put the end in friendship or even give the air to a love affair. And the worst of it is, you may not even suspect it, because unpleasing breath can catch up with you without your knowing it. So ask yourself, could you be the victim of unpleasing breath? Guard against it this way. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate tooth powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate tooth powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, Zuki, we had quite an experience with those birthday cards. You know, Zuki, I like to feel that you learned something from it. Yes, Zuki, everything has a moral. Just what did you learn? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I learned that, that anything worth it, do, 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 any, anything worth it, well, you must keep your nose to the branch, to the branch, to the branch, to the, you gotta keep your nose to the branch, I learned that, <laughs> it sure pays to be ignorant. <laughs> Easton reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder, for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle, brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at this same time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. The Mel Blanc Show was written by David Victor and Herb Little Jr. and was produced and directed by Joe Ryan. Say hello to Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Halo lets hair sparkle with natural brilliance. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather to quickly carry away loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.